Welcome back to an FNA. And today I want to talk about how to grow as an animator and specifically how that relates to receiving notes and what you take from those notes and how you learn looking at those notes and beyond. And why? Because semesters have started, I'm teaching animation mentor and an academy. Workshops are coming in. There's always something where someone is sending me work and I am giving notes. And this could be in a professional setting. This is kind of a, an FNA slash pro tip because it also applies to you when you're a lead or a supervisor and how you navigate those waters when you receive and when you give out notes. So the main point right off the bat is that as a student, when you get notes, you're in a school environment where you get weekly feedback, maybe more, maybe less, but you get feedback from one specific person. It could be a mentor, a teacher, however that relationship is. The big the trick is that when you see the notes and the notes are always the same, that should make something click in your brain where you go, oh, these are repeated notes or something I'm always doing. I need to address this first and really understand that so that it doesn't happen again. Because you're always going to get different kinds of notes because a lot of stuff is also subjective, especially when you do some acting performances or something with, you know, acting choices and humor and whatever, it gets a bit subjective. And then the notes can vary a lot each week. And sometimes even you get a couple of weeks, you get different notes. And then, I don't know, week five, you get a note that's kind of similar to week one. Like there's a bunch of scenarios that can happen. So it's super important that as an animator, when you see repeated notes, that you figure out why that is. And if you don't know, then you have to ask. You have to understand what's going on. And that's what the teacher mentor is there for. You have to ask, what is the problem? And why do I keep getting this note? But what you can not do is just rely on the notes, like a drone where you just get the bullet points and you just look at the notes, fix this, fix that, and move on. Because you have to understand those patterns so that you don't do that again. Because otherwise you start wasting everybody's time because it's your time because you have to keep doing the same fixes and over and the teacher mentor has to give the same notes over and over and over. Now fast forward if you are a leader supervisor and you're getting notes let's say from the client and the client keeps giving you the same notes. If you're the leader of the soup you have to understand and see that pattern and then relay that to your team of animators and explain listen this has come up all the time we can't have that anymore. Now when you are in a client vendor type of relationship you might also get notes from the client that you don't like or you don't understand or you just like completely disagree with. But that doesn't matter because the client wants what the client wants. Even then, you have to see through the notes, understand the pattern and the likes and the dislikes, and then let the team know we can't do that again. And this can also apply to acting notes. Again, even though before when I said it can be subjective, there comes a point where you work for someone, that person is going to have a specific point of view in terms of acting and humor as well, in terms of acting choices and gestures and stuff like that. And even then, you will see patterns and likes and dislikes. You got to make sure you understand and see that. As an animator, seeing those patterns and understanding that and avoiding a repetition of notes and fixes helps you grow because you won't depend. You won't depend on the teacher, the mentor, the friend, whatever, and you can start working on your own shots without relying on heavy feedback and you can advance further. Because it's really important too that after a while you are self-sufficient. You will always need notes. It always helps to show your work to someone. If you just do everything in a vacuum, we don't show anybody, it might be good. It might even be really good, but it's going to be even better when you get outside notes and fresh eyes and, and you know, get input from different perspectives for sure. But as a student, again, this is now the semesters are starting. Something that I really, really, really push is that you need to see the patterns and understand why are these notes coming? And this again, could be technical the spacing and arcs and stuff like that. And then start ingesting that and going, oh, okay, maybe, maybe write down a list, make a list of things that you always hear in terms of notes and then check that before you submit for review. You will save yourself time. You will save your teacher and mentor time. And after a while, you know, you, there's a certain block that you're now self-sufficient in, if that's English, and you can do that with no problem. Problem. And of course, you can get more notes, but there might be more advanced notes and more nuanced notes. And that's really important part where you can explore creativity and just different ideas and you're not stuck on technical things. Because if you give a students constant technical notes about one frame direction changes, bad spacing or stuff like that, where after a while, it's just a, it's a technical thing. It shouldn't be happening anymore. Then that becomes a problem on both sides. Again, it's, it's a lot of time wasted, but also you as an animator, you just won't grow as fast. And of course, if you're professional and you're in charge of a team, then that's going to save the team time. You can address other more important notes and the client doesn't have to give the same notes over and over addressing things that shouldn't be addressed anymore after a couple of weeks, months or even longer. So when you take notes, always pay attention to similar and especially identical notes that come up over and over. It's a good sign that you're going to have to work on that specifically. Now, if you're new to animation, of course, those repeated notes will probably be a list of animation principles or principles plus some extra weak points. Maybe you're just not that good at weight or not just good at weight shifts or direction changes or stuff like that. And as you get more advanced and as you work for someone, it might be a list of specific preferences based on what the client wants. Again, this could be technical and subjective, technical, acting, things, whatever it is. The benefit of knowing what comes up all the time and making a list and checking that for yourself is that A, you'll get faster, but also you can start incorporating more things into your first pass. 
So your first rough blocking pass will actually look like a very solid blocking pass to a point where your first blocking pass is actually blocking plus. So the further you can go, the more you can incorporate ideas, the more you can sell the shot. Because at work, it's not always about, this is the first blocking pass, what do you think, that's it. Sometimes it's just, you just don't have time and you wanna sell the shot as much as you can and you almost go for final. You just put in as much as you can into the shot, present, and maybe they even go, this is great, just polish it up and you're done. Versus, okay, this is okay for first pass, but make sure you put this, this, this in the shot. And then it just adds again, more passes, more discussions, more time wasted. So the more you're aware of what you need to put in and you put that in early, the more time you have for other things and the more fleshed out your first passes are going to be. Of course, that doesn't mean you should go into like super crazy detail and super polish at the very beginning. Focus on the main structure. Is the story clear? Are the poses clear? Like the main thing, the communication and the acting choices, the timing, all of that, of course, needs to be super clear. But after a while, as you get better and faster, you will have that for sure and the extra detail to maybe sell a certain point even more or to address certain subtle parts even better. And the more you can present, the more the client or whoever is going to look at this can decide yes, no, or yes, and, and then start exploring things. And again, that way the shot gets better and better because it will go through more creative revisions and exploration. And in an ideal scenario, the shot might get approved really early on and then go I polish it up and the schedule will allow for you to really dive into polish mode for a week or two and just polish the crap out of it and make it super awesome. Because you don't always have time for that either. Sometimes you just submit and you think it's super great and it's approved, but then it's out of your hands. Like, hey, this is approved by client, it's gone. And you don't have time to go one more time in there and fix things. So again, as a student, it's different. There's a certain schedule and then you have time to put that in. The difference between that and in your professional field where the schedules can be really different and you don't always have time to just sit down, relax and polish for a couple of weeks. So there is that transition. But even as a student early on, I wouldn't go into an assignment where it says blocking pass and really do the bare minimum where a lot of times it looks like layout. There I say a lot of the blocking passes by students are layout passes, maybe a bit more than layout. The really rough animation, rough posing, maybe some okay staging, but all the information isn't there. The timing isn't there. The acting isn't quite there. Like stuff that I always mention is a, a character is sitting and then suddenly the character is standing. Well, how does that character stand up? And is it a tired one? Is it a lean? Is it a look? Is it suspicious? There's so many things that go from a sitting pose to a standing pose. And that to me, all that stuff should be incorporated into your first blocking pass so we understand the character's feelings, emotions, motivations, personality, and so on and so on. So recapping, don't be a drone. Don't just get the list from whoever, teacher, mentor, client, friend, whatever it is, right? And just go, okay, point one, fix this. Okay, done. Point two, fixed. Okay, submit. Without understanding, okay, what is this point? Why am I doing this? And if, as a student, you should absolutely ask why. If you don't understand the note, you have to ask. Because if you don't understand it, then what's the point, then you might as well have the teacher animate the shot for you. Understand the note so that you can apply that the next time. You don't get that note again, especially when it comes to technical aspects. And like I said, this is for students and for professionals, lead supervisor positions. It just, it just goes the other way, right? Just when you are in charge of a team, make sure your team has all the information. And it's your job as a leader soup to understand the pattern, see it, identify repeated notes, even if you disagree with them, where it's something that you wouldn't expect, but see what comes back all the time so that you avoid that. It avoids frustration on the client side, it avoids frustration on your team because they got to keep doing the things over and over. It's not very motivating. So it just benefits everyone. Sure has benefited me. And that's just something I try to do. And towards the, the, the later years at ILM, it has really helped me to just get the shot and always go for final. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it's very complicated and you have to go step by step and you're just going to take a couple passes. But on some of the quote unquote easier shots, you can go for final. And you just also have to get away of that thinking of, well, I don't want to put in too much work because what's the point? It's going to get notes and they're going to change it anyway. That's a mindset that should be an FNA for a different FNA. But you got to get out of that mindset and kind of hold on to your animation or hold on to something where you feel like I'm going to put that in later. No, 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 no. Put in the best you can right away. Sell the shot as much as you can. Of course, within context of schedules and other shots, nothing else should suffer. But I would not hold back and wait for the next pass to put something in you could have put in already. And even if it doesn't get, you know, it doesn't stick and the, the client doesn't want it and you have to redo it, for yourself, you've already animated it, which means that you've gone through the process already, which means that when you do it again later, you're going to be faster. That's for me, my, my end all be all advice for everything that I just said is that you do things and you push yourself, all that is going to help you in your workflow and your skills to become faster and faster and faster because it's all after a while repetition. So you can think about the creative process and not worry about the technical things because you've done it already. Yes, there will be something you've never done before, but as a whole, as time goes by, you'll get a lot more confident in the shot where you go, oh, okay, this is the turnover. What do I need to do? No problem. As in technically, I know what to do. Creatively, 
I have no idea. I don't know how to come up with the best shot ever, but I know that from a technical point of view, I'm gonna be okay. And once you're in that mindset, it's super freeing. Because then you also don't worry about redoing things 10,000 times because you just, it just, you get better. If I do this 10 times over versus one time, I'm gonna be a better animator after 10 times. That's kind of how I look at it. Kind of getting mentally over the frustration of redoing things over and over and over. Because you're gonna have a show, a project or something, well, that will happen eventually. You might as well get used to it and get over it and take the benefit from that and kind of change your negative outlook into something more positive. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it at that. I hope that was helpful. As always, comments are open. Let me know, is this something you're doing already? Is this something you've never done? Do you do this with tweaks? I'm super curious if that helps. What you have done that helps you in terms of growing and understanding patterns of feedback and how you got better and how you leveled up. And if you have any questions for me, if you wanna know more about something I didn't mention, that's a part two, let me know in the comments. We can do a part two. And that is that for me. If you're still watching, thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. You can always like and subscribe. Helps my channel grow. Thank you for watching. Maybe I'll see you again. And if not, thanks for watching once and have a nice day, okay? Thank you.